There you go. All right. So we have both of them going. Hey guys, there's something that me and this gentleman have in common. Do you know what it is? No, it's not our hairstyles. It's actually our love for railroading. Today, myself and RJ78 Productions are hanging out with Nick of Nick's Crossing. We're going to be checking out his model train display, live steamers, and more. And of course, you're invited too. So if you're ready, come along with us. Okay, so we made it up to the favorite part of the house, which is his attic, where we have one heck of a little train collection and train layout. So we're starting here at the top of his steps here. On the right, we got a nice B&O 5318 steamer sitting here on a track. And behind it is, is this a live steamer? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so he has a couple of these actually, which we're going to be checking out later. Some of them actually do work. We're going to put them up under pressure. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that a little bit later with some live steam action. But as we come up here, he has some really incredible advertisements here for Lionel and railroading itself. Really cool stuff. But he actually has a custom made shelf here with some really nice pieces. Most of them are his, some of them are given to him, but as a whole, they are all his now, and they do all run and operate, including this incredible Pennsylvania GG1 that may be on the tracks later. If not, he does have videos on his channel of that, but he's got Amtrak, he's got Southern Pacific, Seaboard, Virginia, a little bit of everything here. So all this, you may be wondering, where does it run? Well, as I turn around, I'll show you. So right here, he's got a really nice double-decked layout here. He's got a main line, he's got switches, he's got an upper area here. And it's all completely, you know, old-school manual transformer control. And it's lighted, he's got, you know, he's able to run a couple of trains at once. And he does live streams up here on Mondays, he calls it Monday... Monday Run Day. Monday Run Day. And he does um, streaming, playing with the trains, talking trains, and... Sometimes about Knobles and stuff too. Yeah, other stuff. <laughs> Not uh, everything. But he's got, you know, a really incredible golf station here. You know, it's really highly detailed. And he's got signal crossings, you know, the trestle. It's really something to see. It's even better at night. I actually gave him the idea just on the whim. Hey, turn your lights off. Let's see how it looks. And it started turning into night runs. And he actually has some LED lighting and stuff. So he's done a fantastic job with what the space he has to work with. And do you have plans to do any more to it? I want to put an 072 loop eventually so I can run some of the larger stuff, but it's kind of tight because the attic doors, we have storage in there, so it's going to be a while. But okay. yeah, and if either that or go up higher, the sky's the limit until I hit the ceiling. So, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we got a little bit more ceiling room here. <laughs> yeah. But inches, yeah. anybody that's ever done model trains, you know that it's pretty much never completed. You're always thinking what else you could do to add to it, whether it's adding like a little person or a whole nother level. So if you want to see his progress, definitely check out the channel. And he'll probably keep you up to date on live streams or future videos. He also does, which is something that's really I've become to enjoy, is reviews on his equipment. He does, you know, is it almost weekly? Yeah, once every yeah, week. Yeah, weekly he picks a piece of equipment. With the car of the week. Car of the week. He puts <laughs> on the tracks thing. here, gives you the history on it. He actually does some repairs and work on his equipment too. So if you want to hear more about it, like I said, his channel, Nick's Crossing, I'll have a link down below. You know, we've been kind of corresponding for a while now and he sent the invite for us to come check it out in person and i am pretty much blown away with what he has here you know seeing on camera is one thing but being here in person is another so i know you don't want to hear me talk anymore so we're going to get to some of the train action probably going to get you guys on board one of the trains going around yep. and i'll give you a couple different perspectives from inside his little layout here so we'll see that next it's a toy. Yeah, it might. It might uh, are they both powered or is one a dummy? One's a dummy. Oh, okay. It might be in neutral. Oh, there it goes. You can actually hit that one. Like. <laughs> Oh, 
So after playing with his train layout for a few hours, it actually felt only like a few minutes, we arrived at a location here to check out this. A GP9 locomotive. This has a little bit of history to it. This was originally a Pennsylvania locomotive, later changed to Penn Central, then Conrail. And he told me who owns it now, which I did forget, so I'll put it on the screen. But this is uh, pretty cool. It's very similar to the one that's at Horseshoe Curb, actually. And as I come over here and show you, are you up there below the lights, you can see the PRR sticker. Originally Pennsylvania Railroad, so. I guess it hasn't ran in a few months, but there are plans to get it up and running again. I think they use it for local excursions, if I'm not mistaken. They do have another one here. Uh, not at this location, but they do use it for train trips for little passenger excursions. Number 7580, and if you wish to, you can always do a Google search. Sometimes searching the number will give you some more information about the equipment itself. And you can see the letter F for front and or forward. So the cab is in the rear portion of the locomotive, but this is the forward position here. So up there you can see the bell and the lights, another PRR sticker. It's a nice looking piece of equipment. And it's sitting here on a siding, so there's no worry of anything coming by. The tracks are actually rusty here, so there she is. Just up from the locomotive, or down, depending on which direction you're headed, are two pieces of maintenance away equipment. These have been featured on my channel before, specifically at the Norfolk Southern Taylor Yard. But here, they're parked, they are still privately owned, and we're going to be respectful of it. But I just wanted to give you a close-up look at it, to how, you know, it would be to work on this. You know, there is a couple seats here. And you can see this seat is actually on rollers, so it can roll back and forth to get to the different controls here. And there's just lines and lines of hydraulic lines, electrical. And there's different seats for different positions. You can see the controls here. You got a little fan to cool yourself, but it is pretty intricate. Probably at least a two or three man crew to operate this. And you can see the big motor here in the front. That's probably, uh, RJ would know more about it, probably a big diesel engine. Even has air horns on it. But yeah, this is one piece of maintenance away, and we have another one right there. And I'll give you a closer look at that. The other piece of equipment here appears to be a type of, almost like an excavator. You see the long boom arm on it. And I believe this is a one-man machine. The operator would sit in there to control it. And you, you can see it does resemble an excavator just that has train wheels instead of treads. But this has a claw on the end, and I believe this is for pulling out or picking up, moving railroad ties, possibly other items, maybe tree limbs or something, but it is pretty neat though. It is a one-man machine to move down the rails and to do the necessary work. So here is an up-close look at some various maintenance away equipment. These are very old. Oh yeah, I think I threw them. There's a, we got two of them. Ooh, there's vents in the water. All right, good. It's a heck it's of a turn. Clear. Yeah, and it's brick line. This one's, this one looks older. So we've arrived at the New Freedom train station. We have a map of the layout here for the rail trail. That's some information plaques, but what I want to show you is not so much the rail trail, but the equipment that's sitting here. There are a pair of cabooses and the little train station, so let's head on over and check them out. So what we're looking at here are numerous sets of tracks. There's actually more of them over there, and there's uh, multiple main lines that ran through here that service the station, and now the station is still uh, in good condition, but no longer used for a passenger service, I believe. But they do have cabooses here. Pennsylvania Railroad, two red ones. 477723 and 477834. Sadly, cabooses are a thing of the past. There's only a few, mostly short line railroads that do use them in their operations. But for now, you'd be lucky to find them on excursions, but no longer on freight service. 
just because the times have changed. They don't no, no longer do paperwork on them. Everything's electronic, you know, and there's uh, less crewmen, stuff like that, shorter trips, more modern conveniences. So cabooses are always enjoyable to look at because you don't see them nowadays. But if you are lucky, you will spot them on a excursion or a passenger trip. But to see them here sitting by a train station, though, it's pretty nice. It looks like this is used for something though, maybe open in the summertime. They do have restrooms and benches out here and a nice little platform. So I can see this being a great place to come. I do know that Nick told us this line is used for excursions here. And actually a little bit later on, we're gonna go further up the line here. There is a, another GP9 and some passenger cars. You guys know me, I love anything really to railroad, whether it's modern, or older or full scale or miniature. So him taking the time to show us this stuff is pretty cool. It's, uh, you know, as I say, another part of history, learning about the rail lines here, being, you know, Pennsylvania, Penn Central, Conrail, stuff like that. And I do have plans to maybe come during the warmer months to take the passenger trip here. So you may see that in a future video. Right next to the cabooses here on the train station platform, they do have a information board here says cabin cars homes on wheels mobile offices it just shows you what they could be used as on the inside and the diameters and stuff like that and these are typically open i guess during certain times to be able to board them you do have a platform here and you'll be able to walk through and see what they look like i do love the little crow's nest the little upper windows steamtown does use them sometimes during rail fest for the caboose hops so i have ridden in one but not on a full trip, but that may be changing in the near future. So it turns out this train station here in New Freedom is on the register of historic places, so it is being protected and preserved. And aside from being a train station, it is partially repurposed. Up here is a type of cafe, which I'll give you just a brief look at. I don't believe it's open today, but yes, it is called the Rail Trail Cafe. That would be a pretty neat spot to stop and grab something to eat right next to the rail line. Would be curious to see if they have any, you know, related memory memorabilia in there for the line, but maybe the future will tell. Maybe try and stop back here and get something to eat and see how it is on the inside. So moving down, we're gonna go past this old signal light here and cross the road and check out the GP9 and passenger cars. And a high railer. So what I was trying to think of before, which I already put on the screen, is the Northern Central Railway of York. That's the equipment we're going to be checking out here, which is their passenger excursion. And he was lucky enough to ride on it, yeah. and I'm hoping to do it myself in the coming months. New. It's uh, 2013. That's when they build it. Mm -hmm. So inside here, it's hard to see, there is a pretty spectacular steam locomotive and it's actually an oil burner, NCRR, and Nick said this does operate, so I would love to catch this in operation in the future, so if I do get information of that, I will be down here to capture it for you guys, maybe even ride behind it. And they are, do have uh, some passenger cars, coach cars here, they are uh, South Branch. The Abraham Lincoln and D. Reed Anderson. Yeah. So they do have three of them that right now are currently hooked up to the GP9, but the steam locomotive would pull these, right? So, yeah, I'll give you just a brief glimpse on the inside here. Train capacity 64. It's actually pretty ornate in there. They have some lanterns and the old style seats and curtains and stuff, so. That would be a pretty enjoyable ride, riding on one of these. So a quick little fun fact that Nick just uh, told me about is that Abraham Lincoln's funeral train actually rode this exact line here heading up towards the Gettysburg area. So this line does have some historic value to it. And coincidental, that car is named the Abraham Lincoln. And here is our second GP9 of the day. This is another former Pennsylvania Railroad locomotive. Obviously, it looks very similar to the other one. This one is operational. And this one, Nick has captured both from 
where I'm standing on the side of the rails and on the rails. So you can always see that footage on his channel. But this one looks like former Adirondack and St. Lawrence Railway. This does operate right now on select weekends. Does it operate full time in the summer? Like, yeah. So yeah, during the normal operating season, it operate every weekend. And just like on the other one, you guys spot it? There is the F. It actually has a nice little signature kind of stamp in the middle of it below the lights for the Adirondack, I think. It's almost like a little, you know, design. I'll actually crop it and show you guys better. That is pretty nice though. It's almost like it's hand painted. But yeah, these are pretty cool equipment. You know, those of you who are familiar with the Pennsylvania Railroad and Conrail, stuff like that, this stuff would be more important to you than the average person. But, you know, this is old equipment. You know, this is not modern diesels that you see operating today. But this one and others are still being used and people are able to enjoy riding behind this and the steam locomotive, which again, I cannot wait to see in operation and to whether I get to ride on it or ride behind it or not. I would still enjoy capturing it for you guys and for myself. I've yet to see a steam locomotive like that in person in operation. And now, lunchtime. I should make every name this or two people. All right, we're gonna head home and eat this. I'll see you there. Okay, so I got myself a double bacon cheeseburger, order of fries, and of course the fountain soda. And it's been about a year since I've had Five Guys and Fries. All right, so I'm gonna share the first bite with you guys and then I'm gonna enjoy the rest. So, there you go. Nice cheesy part. Nom, 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 <laughs> nom. Really good. Oh, it tastes like a veggie burger. But I'll see you guys after lunch. So for the finale for today, we do have two steam engines these are dry fuel steam engines stationary steam engines they're here on the platform i saw them for the first time on a video that he did on his channel and he said if you guys come over i'll pull them out yep. and myself and rj are going to see who could get them fired up under pressure first <laughs> they actually have a working steam whistle they take little fuel pellets and it gets up under pressure with water and this one actually has the flywheel that'll spin as well as that one too i believe yep. Yep. so they're different but similar and I'm going to have you guys kind of stationary on my main camera so you can see from a distance as to what we're doing, how it's going, and stuff like that, and see who wins. But <laughs> I'm going to win. So. <laughs> we'll get started in just a minute, and we'll see uh, how water. cool these are going to be after you get some water. I'm going to see where the water lines up. There you go. So your water line once you see like the hash, mm -hmm. you want it to be between above that and um, it's a little overfilled, but it should be okay. And you close the whistle. And this one. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. I guess I'll take this one here. Okay. You can have that one. All right. That's cool. Oh, you have to. I'm not. Well, you have to post the fire back in oh. the boiler. Why isn't this catching? You give me faulty tablets here. <laughs> this is rigged. I think you got a bonfire going there. Yeah. I know. Well, uh -oh. this one's standing up, so it won't go in all the way. Might have to go uh, further back. There it goes. There you go. There we go. Fire is in the pot. Cool. 
And we have the first burn of the evening. Nah, it wasn't a burn. It was more like a... You know. It's just a flesh wound. Remember, guys, we want this one to win, so... Yeah. Root. English steamer. English steamer. It's like a name of a sports team, the English <laughs> <laughs> Close up. We got flamage and some heat. Oh yeah, these things. I think they put out um, several hundred BTUs. It's pretty oh, cool. That's it. <laughs> it's a oh, steam yeah. stack. It's yeah. cool when it. So when this one actually goes off, the steam shoots out from the exhaust here into the stack. And, and this, this is the uh, it, like the gear or whatever or. Um... That's shifter, cylinder. yeah, yeah. Like you get forward, forward, reverse, forward and reverse. Okay. And yours uh, is open, pretty much. And I got a little whistle here. Actually, I'm gonna get burned. No pressure. Oh, a little bit of pressure. All right, what about this one? Oh, it's hot, really hot. Bulbs. I hear some. A little bit of pressure steam. there. A little, a little vent. Very hot. You already opened it. Oh, you have to spin the wheel. Oh, sorry. Where'd you win this battle? Yeah, the safety. It's okay. Might be more impressive. <laughs> the safety's about to go on first. <laughs> Cylinder steam effect. We gotta get there quick. They're pretty close. Put them in them. It's okay if the front ones aren't lit. Yeah, they'll, they'll catch. They'll, they'll get there. 
All right, guys, this is round two. They've switched sides, so... Ooh, ow, hot. <laughs> RJ's burn, round two. <laughs> I got All right, the uh, Jensen is lit, and we're now waiting on... The, the Pioneer. <laughs> He's blew it out. <laughs> All right. Fires are lit. So the sun's going down, temperatures are going down, but the fire is growing. So just a few moments, we'll have some pressure again. And now I'm going to be trying out this one here. And the fire you is... You're good. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's cooking in there. We do have a little bit of excess water, so let me try to get this... It's gonna be bad. That's gonna be already. Whoops. <laughs> you can probably start rolling now. Yeah, yeah, you can get rolling. This? Yep. And then, uh. Oh, there we go. There you go. Oh, my. Oh, that's cooking. All right, guys, we're going to finish playing with the steam engines here. And this is going to conclude today's video. A big special thanks to Nick's Crossing for having us out here to check out this amazing train layout up in the attic, checking out the live steamers and the railroad equipment down in his area. Also, thanks to RJ for joining me today, too. We had a great day, had some good food, and after the video's over, we're going back to play with the trains. Make sure you check down below in the description for the links for their channels. And if you have any questions about anything you see, feel free to comment down below. Otherwise, I want to thank you for watching and spending the day with us. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.